All right, time to clean this basement up. Then we're gonna prime and then we're gonna top coat. Floors are easy, but you wanna make sure that you get all that dust, dirt, grime, and mess up off this floor. This is a huge 4,000 square foot floor that we're gonna do. It's all continuous and connecting. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with two guys in a matter of days. It's simple, it's a lot of work, but the steps are easy. All right, this is gonna be a cool little bunk room. I can't wait to show you. Here we go. All right, my buddy Brandon and my brother Matt helped me clean this floor, which was the first step. Make sure you sweep, get all the dust, and then vacuum it up. Show me vacuum step. We're vacuuming here. Just get the dust up. Next step is to mix the epoxy for my primer. Cutting in the perimeter first. We're doing a seal coat. The sun went down a long time ago. Why do you add metallic? You want black underneath just about any color. It magnifies and accentuates it and makes it look deep and basically really good. That's the exact amount you want right there. Metallics is how I tint my foreign epoxy because it looks like a floor should. It's not spray paint, it's not dye. We're not making it look all like stone. We're doing a coating of metallic infused epoxy Make sure you mix your metallics thoroughly so you avoid any clumps. Yeah, so what I do around the door trim is use a brush because you can cut it in when you don't get your trim all messy. I use a two inch cut in brush around my woodwork and a small six inch weenie roller around the perimeter and a large roller to do the field. Remember, I'm just doing a seal coat on this step so I'm applying a thin coat with black metallics added and just go over each area multiple times so you get an even coat. Remember, don't put it on too thick. If the seal coat is applied thin enough, the air can escape and it won't get trapped. Therefore, you won't have a bunch of bubbles to sand out the next day. Having multiple people help me allowed us to apply and mix all at the same time. So we were never waiting on more material. Mixing is half the battle. All right, let's finish the seal coat and we'll wrap it up for the evening. All right, when I came back the next day, I did have a few air bubbles that are easy to sand out using basically a drywall sander and a little bit heavier grit. I like to use about 120 grit sandpaper and just pop any bubbles. But because we were within that 24 hour period, we were able to simply just mix and apply the top coat as opposed to sanding the entire floor. I just needed to knock down those bubbles. That's key, apply it before that 24 hour window ends and you don't need to sand the entire floor because it's still cross-linking and it will bond beautifully. When applying the second coat of epoxy, I'm gonna pour my bucket out and focus on the perimeter first. I'll use my magic trowel to push the material right into the perimeter and then I'll focus on the field. I'll use the magic trowel just to go back and forth, covering the field, working my way out of each room. Plan your room so you don't paint yourself into a corner. I'm using two different colors, white and black metallic. I pour out a ribbon of white and then a ribbon of black and then trowel them out. So there's three ways to use this. This is your magic trowel. It's angled. See that? So you can pull to you. You can scoop it back by flipping it and scoop it back. And then you can pull it upside down. So when I'm trying to go in the corners, I can push a big blob over there, turn it, and then just pull it down that wall. I start at the walls and then I pull the field. It's really one, two, three. Upside down, right side up, forward, back. You don't want to try to go forward with the right side up, it sticks. If you're gonna go forward, turn it upside down and push like a shovel. Now you're trying to do a journeyman. Thank you. All right, set that up. Now bring it out the same distance. When I get into the large portions of the great rooms, you can see that I'm not going in straight lines like a lawnmower. I'm actually going in organic movements. The reason I'm doing that is so it doesn't look like it was man-made. Mother Nature is organic. It's free-flowing and that's what I'm doing. 
we have the inspector on site. All right, we've got the uh, second coat on. Looks really, really good. I love this look. Now it's time for the ultimate top coat. The ultimate top coat is going to give us superior scratch resistance. It's going to make this floor look like a natural sheen instead of a super high gloss. And we're going to add that ultimate top coat so that this floor is scratch resistant for years and years to come. Man, I love the organic look and the flow that we did by adding two colors, black and white, and simply putting them out segregated, a row of black and a row of white, and melding them together by using that magic trowel, you get this look. It couldn't have been easier, it's a lot of labor, but the technique was simple. All right, let's do the top coat right now. When applying my flooring top coat, I'm simply adding it thick and then I'll come back and back roll it to get the material a little bit thin, but still have even full coverage over the entire floor. You don't wanna leave any undone spots because then you'll see some shininess pushing through and you'll see some lap lines. But if you do your strokes overlapping themselves using a one quarter inch, nine inch roller in this case, I went ahead and used some tape and got rid of any loose fibers off that roller prior to applying my top coat and look at the end result. I went ahead and recorded this live, check it out. Behind the scenes, I'm on a Wi-Fi signal right here on this job site. This was all just uh, glued down carpet. You gotta see this. Look at this basement. Look at the floor here. I really love how it came out. And all I did is use two metallics. I used white and I used black. And this floor is just beautiful. Look at that. Look at that floor. Just love the feeling down here. It's really cool. We're gonna do a wood stove here. We're gonna do a, a theater, theater down here. The garage, it's not quite dry, so I'm not gonna walk on that yet. Okay, this is gonna be where we put some gym equipment in here. Remember, the steps were simple. First, we cleaned everything up, vacuumed all of the dust. We mixed our materials and cut in the perimeter. We added our seal coat, added the flood coat with two different colors, white and black, and then simply did the ultimate top coat. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, until next time, from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. I'll see you on the next video.